If Britain allows Ukraine to use Storm Shadow missiles, the Ukrainian military will be able to strike 14 airfields on Russian territory, the Times reports. The publication published a map of Russia, which shows several strategically important objects that, in theory, British long-range missiles could reach. Journalists noted that if restrictions on the use of Storm Shadow are lifted from Kiev, the radius of destruction will increase by 250 kilometers into Russian territory. In this case, 14 airfields will become potential targets, including Shaikovka in the Kaluga region. In addition, Ukrainian military personnel will be able to attack one oil refinery and the headquarters of the Southern Military District, located in Rostov-on-Don, the publication's article says. On Saturday, September 14, the leader of the British Heritage Party, David Curtin, warned on the social network X about threats to the West due to plans to allow the Ukrainian army to strike deep into Russia. The politician expressed his concern against the backdrop of a statement by Russian President Vladimir Putin. The head of the Russian state stated that if Ukraine is allowed to strike Russia with long-range weapons, this will change the meaning of the conflict and will mean that NATO countries are fighting with the Russian Federation. Recall, President Volodymyr Zelensky urged Western leaders to overcome the fear of making strong, objectively necessary decisions. He said, only decisiveness can bring a just end to this war. It is decisiveness that most effectively protects against terror. Referring directly to Storm Shadow, he added, the only way to counter this terror is through a systemic solution, long-range capabilities to destroy Russian military aviation at its bases. As soon as there is a change in Western policy on the use of long-range missiles, Ukraine will strike Russian airbases, ammunition depots and other military targets that threaten its territory, the Times writes. As George Barros, a research fellow at the Institute for the Study of War, an American think tank noted, in addition to the aircraft that Russia could withdraw from the borders, there are hundreds of other high-value assets that the Russians cannot remove from the ATACMS zone. It is also indicated that the Anglo-French Storm Shadow missiles are particularly useful for penetrating bunkers, they can hit fuel depots, vehicle repair and recovery bases, command posts and other logistics hubs. The abandonment of these bases could worsen Russian logistics on a massive scale and reduce Russia's ability to deliver supplies to the front in Ukraine, Barros added. The Ukrainian military source added that a change in Western policy would prevent Russian strikes and provide the necessary deterrence. All this is to bring us closer to the end of the war. Ben Barry, a senior fellow for land warfare and the International Institute for Strategic Studies, said US missiles were still more effective against a range of battlefield targets. They have a warhead that is designed to explode on the surface, so they are very good for targets like artillery batteries, division headquarters, ammunition dumps and anti-craft missile sites. They are not as useful against targets that the Storm Shadow is useful for. It's like comparing a knife and a fork. You can use either one, but it's better to use them together. Recall that earlier, the Times, citing sources familiar with the situation, reported that US President Joe Biden may allow Ukraine to use British and French Storm Shadow stroke scalp missiles to strike Russian territory, but not American long-range weapons, in particular ATACMS missiles. The US, which has imposed restrictions on its equipment used to strike Russia, is currently not allowing its navigation data to be used, with President Joe Biden's administration citing the risk of escalating war against Russia. Vladimir Putin has warned against the move, saying the Ukrainian military would need help programming missions from NATO experts to launch long-range strikes. The host of the state propaganda channel, Russia24, blurted out on camera about the crime of the Russian armed forces in Ukraine. Speaking about the offensive in the Kurokovsk direction, the presenter spoke quite frankly about the favorite tactic of the Russian army, which consists of raising the cities and villages of Ukraine to dust. And here is footage from the South Donetsk front. The crews of the Tulip mortar destroyed another populated area, the propagandist declared cheerfully. 
Realizing that he had said something wrong, the RF presenter froze for a few seconds with a frightened face, after which he tried to correct himself. He specified that the Ukrainian Armed Forces point had been destroyed. Recall, for the millions of people affected by the conflict, it has been 2.7 years of immense suffering, in particular for those belonging to vulnerable groups such as women, children, older persons, and persons with disabilities. The conflict has also had a devastating impact on men, given that those eligible for military service are forbidden from leaving the country. The conflict in Ukraine dates back to 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. This led to tensions and eventual conflicts in the Ukrainian regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, where pro-Russian armed groups have sought control. On the 24th of February 2022, Russia launched a full land, sea and air invasion of Ukraine. Russia's invasion was in violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and the UN Charter which prohibits such acts. As the conflict continues in Ukraine's east and south, where fighting on the front lines remains intense, with a significant increase in Russian attacks. In areas under their control, the Russian armed forces have been accused of willful killing, summary executions, rape and other forms of sexual violence, the use of torture in a widespread and systematic way in detention facilities, as well as unlawful transfer and or deportation of Ukrainian children to Russia or areas under their control in Ukraine. Incidents of torture and ill treatment against Russian soldiers and prisoners of war by Ukrainian forces have also been reported. International human rights law forbid murder and summary executions and require the humane treatment of persons in the power of the enemy. All acts of torture, rape and other forms of sexual violence against women and girls as well as men and boys are prohibited.